Welcome to Dave C. Straight from the pit. Dave C. here. I thought for today's show, we could talk about a little bit different of a topic. Just uh, adult uh, collecting. As far as, you know, collecting uh, 80s G.I. Joe as an adult. And as you know, it's a little bit different than, say, when we were kids in the 80s. Where you had, you know, all your friends at school or all your friends um, in the surveys, like all your neighbors and uh, friends from, you know, family members that you'd get together for Christmas or, um, you know, different different holidays like birthdays and stuff. Um, where, you know, it was always around and you could uh, collect kind of through them where, you know, you'd say to your cousin, hey, you know, I, I'm going to get shipwreck and... Uh, Lady J, are, are you going to get uh, Snake Eyes so we can play together? Um, you know, like, like kind of like stuff like that. So, um, yeah, as, as an adult, it's a little bit harder because you have to search out and, uh, and, and find all this stuff again. And um, now when you're doing that, you're going to have a lot of positive experiences that, uh, you know, just take you back and make you feel really good. And also just getting a good uh, deal in general because this stuff is not... Um, cheap anymore like it was back then but also you're going to have some uh, some negative experiences that are kind of comical and uh, um, I think sometimes uh, maybe people should talk a little bit more about that because it's part of uh, collecting uh, when you get older that um, can be really irritating or really rewarding so I thought first we could start off with maybe some more uh, negative happenings because sometimes they can be a little bit more entertaining um, funny how that is, but um, sometimes sometimes they're kind of interesting because people can relate to them. So, yeah, I thought uh, we could talk about that. So a couple of them are involving uh, the 1988 Rolling Thunder. That Now I have um, two of them. But at, at one time, of course, when I was recollecting, again, I didn't have any. So it was quite a, quite a journey to try to uh, find and obtain uh, Rolling Thunder. So um, I had... Uh, found one on a free ad and uh it's called kadiji it's up here in canada it's similar to ones down in the u.s or other parts of the world i contacted a seller and we agreed on a price you know, he had a, a fair price posted and uh i felt it was fair i mean it wasn't um wasn't necessarily uh totally what it was worth it was probably maybe a little bit less than what it was worth but, uh, you know, not not like monumentally uh, lower. Um, well, I'll just say it because I don't care. Usually I don't talk about money on here because I don't, as you know, it, none of the values of the stuff really matters to me. It's more about having it and, and reliving the, uh, the great memories of, of the 80s, um, just like the music and the, the movies from that time. But anyway, yeah, so this was a couple of years ago. I found one for 175 bucks, which which is expensive, but at the same time, kind of the uh, the going rate for one. So uh, I was like, okay, I'll, I'll pay it because I, I wanted to get one. And Shane wanted one too because we looked at them um, online and looking at all the little features and stuff. So I went to meet the guy. It was a bit of a drive. It was about maybe an hour drive. And uh, I went in and uh, to his, his, his doorway and he told me that he had already sold it. He sold it to somebody else. And I was like, well, why didn't you, you know, tell me? Why didn't you uh, just text me and say, hey, I sold to somebody else or it's not available anymore or, or you know, whatever. So I was a little ticked that I, I uh, drove all the way up there for nothing. And, uh, you know, Shane wasn't very happy with that either. So uh, that was my first, that was my first bad experience with uh, Rolling Thunder. And then my second one was uh, just before Christmas. A couple of years ago, um, I found one online at a local toy shop. So I clicked purchase because it was $175, which I thought was pretty good. So I went down to uh, his shop because he said he could have it available um, a couple days late, uh, later. So I, I went down to the shop and uh, he said it was uh, $225 now. And, and I was like, well, like 225 like with the taxes on it because i know you're a store or your shop 
so you, you know you're gonna charge a, a tax no no it's it's 225 plus tax but then i was like well yeah but it was 175 on the site uh, plus tax so and i just kind of didn't like it because it was sort of like like i already kind of agreed again on the price but it seemed like it wasn't happening again so i uh i was like ah whatever shane wants this thing so if this guy wants to be like the guy on the toy story movie where He's going to be a dick about it then okay whatever then he's going to be that guy and i'll i'll deal with it this time right so he's bringing it up to the cash and then he says but that doesn't include the figure and then he he took the armadillo figure out of it and and i was like well on the website it said with, with figure and then he's like he's like well i'm not selling the figure and then i i, I was like oh like kind of but anyway that that one i uh I did, I did buy it, and uh, yeah, so I didn't, I didn't have the figure, and uh, I was able to get another Rolling Thunder uh, last Christmas at a really good price from somebody else. So, and it was complete, and uh, yeah, it had, it had the figure. So, um, that was my dealings with the uh, Rolling Thunder, and here they are. Here, just really happy to have these. Because they were a bit of a bugger to get. And there's the figure there, Armadillo. And then another one was the 1985 Cobra Frogman. And there he is there. I don't know if you can see him behind me. He's kind of behind my, my shoulder there. But yeah, anyway, Shane and I... We really wanted one on card because it's one of our favorite figures and we like to army build it. And we already had um, enough uh, loose figures to army build it. But we wanted a carded version because we, re we really like that uh, Hector Greedo art like everybody else does. So um, we were looking for one and of course they were kind of pricey. So we were going to the, the shows and you know they were all kind of pricey which is expected. But I, I found one again on a free ad and uh, a guy said it was, you know, really good condition and he showed me all the pictures and uh, I agreed on a price that was a good price. You know, it wasn't wasn't the going rate, but it wasn't um, like he was giving it away. So and uh, so we drove up all the way up to Toronto and uh, um, I met this guy and he, he comes out and he, he has this uh, figure in a bag and he, he shows me it. It was a frog man. But it it, uh, it wasn't the one that he showed me pictures of. It, it the corners were all dinged and the bubble was all cracked, and it, like kind of pushed in or uh, popped in, and uh, there was writing on it on the back, like some pen. So I was like, well, I can't I can't give you uh, what I said I was gonna uh, give you for this because uh, it's not it's it's not what what it's supposed to be. And he's like, oh well, I, I sent you pictures, and I was like no you know there was no pen on it and you know and he's like he's like oh well i do have a i do have a few other ones and i was like oh okay so i was starting to get worried because i was like not again like like how many times is this gonna happen to me some shenanigans right so so he, he comes back out and then uh he had uh he had the frog man and it was the one that he had pictures of but i think he was kind of playing it off like like he made an honest mistake but you know, kind of one of those ones where you're like, nah, I don't, I don't know if that was the case. And uh, so, yeah, I ended up getting it and uh, paying what we agreed on. But it was just kind of, uh, kind of funny to uh, kind of go through those uh, shenanigans. Another one is uh, something that happened to me when I was at a toy show, one of the Mississauga ones up here in Canada. And uh, one of the vendors there was, was, uh, talking to me about Joe's and stuff, because I usually um, buy from him over the years. And I was uh, talking about how I was looking for a, a aircraft carrier because I didn't have a flag yet. It was right, right when I started getting back into collecting. I think like maybe 2000 and maybe 15 or something like that. So quite a few years ago now. And uh, he was like, uh, yeah, I know a guy who has one. He lives out by Simcoe. And I, th I think he's he's going to sell it. And I was like, oh, okay. So 
he gave me his number and said, if, if you want to contact him. So I was like, okay, that's cool. So I called the guy and sure enough, he told me his story. He was going to move, looking at moving. He had to, uh, didn't have any room for it anymore. And like, like he loved it, but he, you know, his wife didn't want it around the house anymore. And, and I was, I was like, okay, so like, like, what do you want for it? So, uh, we agreed on uh, $500, which at the time wasn't too bad. It wasn't fully complete. It was missing, uh, um, quite a few things. Um, well, not quite a few, but some of the more expensive things like the fantail, uh, at the back or the, uh, a few of the, uh, things at the top or, um, was missing, um, one of those railings there that you see there, I think the bottom one. But anyway, I wasn't too concerned because at that time you could get the parts for relatively cheap. Um, not like now, but so I was like, I was like, okay. And, uh, he, he's like, oh, I have some other stuff too, if, if you want to buy it. And I was like, oh, okay. Um, I'm not really interested in that, but because I, I just want the flag. So um, Shane didn't go with me this time. He was a little bit uh, younger. So I, I drove all the way out there and uh, I show up. It's stifling hot, I remember. Just a super hot day. Like it was in, uh, uh, I think, August it was. Um, but anyway, so I get out of the car and he, he has uh, all this Joe stuff. Um, in front of his garage and in this box is, uh, is, uh, all these, uh, flag parts, which I know because I had the flag when I was a kid. So I, uh, I knew what all the parts were. I knew how they all popped together. I know exactly everything about them. And I know like the yellowing, how they, they, they can yellow and you know, be just because I'm, I was kind of a, a big, big Joe guy. I, I, I kind of knew all this stuff. Right. So anyway, I'm, I'm talking to him and then he said, uh, yeah, if you, if you want to take it all, uh, for, uh, 700. And I was like, well, you know, I, I, I don't have 700. I bought 500. I just, I just want the flag. And then he's like, he's like, oh, okay, well, no deal. Then I was like, well, like, what do you mean? I, I don't, uh, I don't want the other stuff. It was like a kind of a yellow sky striker that had been around the block a bit. And, uh, I forget what Ulster was, like a few other, you know, things that maybe I wouldn't really want at the time. I can't remember, but so I just said to him, oh, okay. And I just left and, uh, yeah, that was it. But that was a really weird one, but, uh, true story and, uh, kind of weird, but that was a negative one. But I think now we should move on to some positive ones because I, I'm kind of remembering these old ones and they're not, not sounding like it was too much fun. So let's talk about some fun ones now. So this one's from about uh, 2017, and I was buying um, a lot of Joe stuff at that time, just trying to uh, kind of recuperate a lot of the ones that I had uh, sold or gotten rid of when I was younger. And uh, I was able to find a uh, Cobra Soldier in 1982, a mint on card, which was really important to me because in my previous collection about 10 years before that, um, I had, I had one of those and, and it was one of the ones, you know, where you, where you lose one, like you, uh, like you, like you sell one at, well, at one point in your life. And then you're like, man, like, like years later, like, I, I wish I didn't do that. Cause you just can't get it again. Like you can't, you can't get it again because it's just an outrageous price. And, and it, it kind of, it kind of bothers you a bit, right? As a collector, I call it collector's anxiety. Um, some, sometimes, um, we go through that, but, but anyway, um, yeah. So just by chance, I was searching on eBay of all places and, uh, there was this woman and she had this, uh, Cobra soldier of 1982, uh, perfect. Like it was perfect mint. I mean, it has a sticker on it, but I always like the price sticker because then it's more nostalgic to me. You can see the, the price and, you know, what it cost back then in 82. And, and you can also see the uh, the store that it was bought from, which to me just adds to the nostalgia. It doesn't doesn't take away from the nostalgia. But anyway, so uh, I talked to her. It turned out that she had bought it uh, way back in 82 for uh, one of her kids. And it had uh, fell behind uh, all the clothes in her closet. And it was... It was down behind everything, and I guess there were some boxes down there or something that it it was it was behind. So 
she said that that she found it and uh, that she just wants to sell it. And uh, he, here's the price. And it, it was it was really low. Like it, it was it was not the price was not um, equal to, to what it was worth. So I said, no, like I'll, I'll, I'll give you this much. And I offered I think I offered one hundred dollars more. And uh, she was like, oh, OK, that's great. And I, I bought it right away. And I have a feeling it was just listed because I don't know how how it wasn't sold. So, but anyway, yeah, so that was a really nice one because, uh, well, it's the one right there. I don't know if you can see it. It's behind me, but it's got to be probably my prized possession of my collection just because I really love that that figure and I, I love that card, the uh, Greedo art from 1982. And it's an original run from uh, 82. And uh, I guess that brings me on to the next one. Um, a lot of you guys know my my favorite uh, figure is Stalker, a 1982 Stalker. And I had the uh, straight arm version, of course, back then. And I was able to get uh, one of those. Here it is here. I've got it in some glass here in a case. But yeah, it's a 1982. It's got the uh, price tag on it. And believe it or not, I got it from Turkey. I remember the day I, I got this, I told Scuba Pete about it. My good friend Pete. And uh, it's absolutely true. It's a, a crazy story. I was on Etsy, and uh, it was on there for like $100. And I was like, it, it's fake, right? Like it, it has to be fake. It has to be recarded or, um, you know, it's from Turkey. So it's the other side of the world. And maybe they don't know anything about G.I. Joe, and they don't know that this is an original or, or whatever. But I talked to the guy, and he took a chance because he sent me a, a lot of photos. And uh, I quickly realized that, that, no, this thing was legit. So I bought it. And uh, that, that was just a really great thing that happened to me because, again, I had one of these um, before when I was younger. And then even when I started collecting in the uh, early thousands again, I was able to get one of these on cards. So this was another one where I was like, oh, I just wish I could have it back, but I'm never going to get a chance to have it back because... You know, it's uh, it's it's just too expensive now. But, yeah, so that was an interesting one. And then another one uh, also involves the uh, Cobra Frogman, the eel, right there. Um, yeah, so, but it's not that uh, carded one. It's a uh, loose Frogman. And I was able to get, I think it was eight of them, off of a guy on eBay uh, from Hong Kong. And it, it turned out, I talked to him for quite a bit. Um, I, I uh, got his uh, Instagram uh, number, his account, and I was able to uh, talk to him through Instagram after I found out that uh, his dad um, worked for Hasbro in the 1980s. So he, he worked at the, the factories in Hong Kong uh, where these were made. So there's a good chance that he, he might have made some of these figures that, that this gentleman was selling me. Um, online. So yeah, and he, they were a really good price. I think he had eight of them for like $120. And uh, they're not like fake black majors. And you know, first I thought maybe they're just black majors, but they weren't. They had the uh, Hasbro mark on it, uh, made in Hong Kong, like on the butt. And then on the leg has the uh, uh, 1985 date, as it should. And uh, yeah, that was really enjoyable uh, contact with him because I, I talked to him all about uh, Hong Kong over there and how... Uh, how his dad would come home from work and um, just a little bit about uh, what his dad worked for Hasbro uh, in that plant. And um, that's a really good memory. And then another one was the Cobra Water Moccasin, as you can see here. And I got this one on eBay. And I, I just love this box. Had it when I was a kid, so I had to have it in um, my collection, of course, as an adult. So... But yeah, I was on eBay one day, and there was a best offer option from this this guy from uh, San Jose, California, in the United States. And uh, I put this offer in, and it was a crazy offer. Like, it was just low. And, you know, I thought, I'm not going to get it for that, and whatever. But he accepted it. And uh, so I, I talked to him, and uh, I just said to him, you know, like, like, are you sure that's okay? And then and he's like, he's like, oh yeah, 
yeah, that's okay. I, I, I don't want any more. He's, he said, I know what it's worth. I just, you know, I don't, I don't really want it around the house anymore. And it was mine from when I was a kid. And I used to uh, uh, play with it in the pool. I guess he had a pool in his backyard. And, um, yeah, so it was just really cool that uh, this guy was just so nice. And and that this was his actual one that he, he played with when he was a kid. And that he wasn't just some, you know, some scummy guy trying to make, like, a million dollars on uh, eBay. I'm just remembering now there's uh, a whole bunch of other ones. So I'd have to do a video that, you know, might be like two hours long just to talk about all the uh, generosity that, that people have, uh, have, uh, have given me over the years of uh, reacquiring all this stuff for Shane and I's uh, Joe collection down here in the pit. There's, there's another one here. That's the uh, Defiant. And we got that. Uh, one Christmas and that guy packaged it, it uh, so well um, as you know these things are really flimsy and if they're not packaged right for shipping they can just get blown apart like those blue doors especially and the crank system uh, a lot of it it's just so flimsy and fragile but he packed it so well and he even gave me uh, gave me instructions how to uh, take it out of the box so that was really really cool he was an older guy from uh, Indianapolis right down in the United States just a great guy. A lot of my friends have sent me gifts um, on the channel here, like uh, Joseph. He sent me uh, this Mirage here, and Stu sent me a classified uh, Ram bike, and uh, Joe 173 and Scuba Pete sent me uh, Black Major figures, and uh, uh, Goji sent uh, Shane and I some diecast guys, and uh, the Vamp, and uh, also uh, the uh, Stinger in the die cast and we love those so there's there's a lot of generosity out there and I think we shouldn't forget that when uh, when we kind of have to go through some some uh, rougher ones as adult collectors like kind of guys being like the uh, Toy Story guy that uh, just kind of tries to uh, you know make a buck instead of uh, giving uh, giving a you know what about uh, people but yeah, as long as we uh, keep that spirit alive um, of being, uh, you know, good people and uh, respectful, then it will make collecting that much more fun. Okay, see you guys next time. Yo, Joe.